overarching theme of the piece is uh, this, the experience of solitary confinement. It was actually Adam who brought Anna to, into uh, the dialogue around who should we commission next. Adam has known Anna for quite some time. He's very familiar with her music and this was about five years ago. We also then, after deciding to uh, commission her to write a new opera, um, we found uh, Oana, the librettist of the piece, to work with Anna and we met five years ago. So uh, the piece is a long time in the making. Shit. So I took some time to come up with the idea, um, the subject matter, and then there was probably probably about a year of research off and on, and uh, then the writing began. Yeah, we kind of, um, we had had conversations along the way which were very fruitful mm -hmm. and we were sort of trying to shape this idea and um, collect our thoughts on the kinds of things we would resonate um, on in terms of subject matter. And so eventually um, when this story came out, it just seemed like such an exciting um, story to tell. Um, and I really loved uh, Juana's initial writing on it and was really excited about it. In terms of the music, uh, I had sort of started off with setting these catalogs that Juana had created. They were visual tapestries. Uh, lists of time that um, the prisoner had spent in the uh, incarceration unit, for example, uh, like days, the, the kind of continuous idea of this material that was accumulating over time. And originally it was quite notated in a traditional way, um, but at a certain point that approach seemed disingenuous to the subject matter. Um, and at that point, I decided to go completely with a graphic notation. Um, and then that really freed up the process for me. And then the music came very quickly at that point. This week really gave us a chance to explore Anna Hospin's brilliant score. Um, the score is very graphic, it's very experimental. I've adored Anna's music for a long time, uh, and this m score that she's created is something very different for her, it's something very different for the musicians. Um, it's a type of graphic notation that is completely new and something that none of us have seen before, and so it gives us a chance to um, really, really express our ourselves from an individual level, and so the musicians can really take all of the gestures and interesting notation that Anna has created and uh, use their own expression, their own creativity. I, I always love these collaborative type of processes where everyone has uh, creative agency to express themselves and so it's, it's been very special for everyone. Silk and Learning from this type of score is very different because instead of mathematically putting together rhythm and notation in your head, you have to kind of let it all go and make sound based on what you see. And in a way it's actually more freeing and more creative because it allows you to kind of have no rules. There's a structure, but the rules come as we collectively make the music together with the notation. looking at this from uh, more of a universal context, but um, also honing in on the Canadian context. While we've been working with the designers, we've been hearing the conversations from uh, the singers, our um, topic experts, so we had several uh, academic experts on, who, who are criminologists who um, helped inform the process. All of these things, both the sound and the information learned and our conversations as a result, um, 
are directly influencing the structure of, of the opera. It wanted and bacteria. Initially, the piece has been inspired by a Romanian prisoner. Um, however, what Amanda's been so kind to illuminate for me is that because this piece is going to be taking place on stolen land, on indigenous land, that has an implication uh, no matter what. So then we hear the stats, and as an indigenous woman, it's really difficult to hear those numbers and just how high they are of women, indigenous women in prison. So of course, no matter what, if this piece is happening here, it is about us. Um, then you have an indigenous woman playing L, so <laughs> it's about us. And I think that that's incredibly, incredibly relevant and we need to continue to ask Canada to face its truth. For both the music and the staging, we want input on the needs of the piece, but also the people creating the piece. So that's why it was so important for us at, at every stage to bring as many voices and as many pr creative perspectives together from different departments. We also knew that we really wanted to integrate uh, responsive media, um, new, new media. And in order to do that, it's really important to um, make sure that you're building t in tandem rather than trying to fit the technology alongside the music. It's rare that we get to be in a process quite this early, um, and it's always very much enjoyed. So we've been doing a lot of research into what solitary confinement looks like, both on a sort of physical and also an emotional level, and then taking some of those concepts and starting to experiment with live sensors, um, different forms of visualization, and just doing some like really early research, basically. So I've been working with uh, cameras, with some uh, live stuff, as well as some video that we pre-recorded in order to like, have a chance to work with it. Uh, just creating uh, interactive video elements for the show, because um, as we've been building the show, we've been deciding that security cameras are obviously a big part of uh, the prison system, so we're going to probably integrate a real cameras into the actual show. And so in using that um, with Touch Designer, some interactive stuff, uh, being basically just playing around, trying to create something that was uh, interesting and probably get used in the show. You're gonna pick one part of your body and you're gonna let that part of your body take you as low as you like. So I'll go all the way. Movement-wise, we're thinking about being in a confined space and the interaction with space and being in a small space but craving expanse and craving vastness and how do you find that, not physically but maybe somatically or through feelings or thoughts or imagination and tapping into that. So we've been trying to melt into the walls or imagine our cells or slugs like crawling through this, the spaces of the molecules of the walls or picking anchor points and sliding them around the wall. So really taking the concepts and as opposed to approaching them psychologically and really like pretending we were in that sort of space, which could be terrible to sit in for a long time. We're really excited to have both Laurier and Glenn Gould School students at or recently graduated young artists um, in this process. Although this isn't a program, it is something that we wanted to provide as an opportunity for people who are interested in learning alternative opera. So um, it seems like people are not only learning a lot, but we're learning a lot from them as well. Um, and that just touches on the, the collective nature of this project. So the education process has been a lot more fluid and creative than I feared. Um, graphic scores is something I learned about in school in a purely theoretical way. Um, and so to actually be participating in a graphic score and trying to interpret it, uh, when I was left to practice it on my own before I came to the workshop, I was really scared about how precise it might be and how 
nitpicky the music director might be about certain pitches and then to get here and realize that it's just fitting yourself into whatever music is being made has been really rewarding. Wax cylinders. Really every project requires its own process. Um, this is definitely a way that I work um, as a director. Every time I have a piece, I'm thinking, how can we arrive to the goal? Um, something that's really important to us as a group is to make sure that we bring in more voices into the process. So um, in this particular project, we really wanted to make sure that we were able to create a, a, a space where people felt comfortable to um, voice their thoughts, give input, um, be artists. And we sort of developed the whole process around that idea, including um, the, the importance of research and collective knowledge. So everything that we did in order to create uh, a process had those elements in mind to make sure that we are creating a clear piece. Even with an abstract piece, we want to make sure that the message is clear um, and that we're creating a piece that uh, values both the people that, um, that the messages are about as well as the creators in the team.